Okay, I think we made this work and we are online here. And thank you for joining us, for, for clicking in. I usually say tuning in on, on TV, but thanks for clicking in. Different world right now. And we're uh, in. We're, it is a very uh, special time that yes. we can have together. We're, we're making, uh, kind of connecting with some of our, our experts that we use on, on a better us, yeah. as well as some of our kitchen couples. And we're just saying, hey, we're in the same boat that you guys are. So everyone is. And so we're, we're going to just kind of give some, uh, some ideas on how do we cope with all that's going on. So we're going to make some introductions. Uh, in, in a moment, I'm going to fully introduce, properly introduce Dave and Ashley Willis. So they're uh, down south, so we have them in the lower box there. And, uh, but <laughs> They're actually down south in Texas, and we'll tell you all about that in just a moment. But first, if you're a regular viewer of A Better Us, you'll recognize the couple this way. This side <laughs> of us, Eric and Kara Maines. Um, they are on A Better Us, they're regulars. Um, and for the first three seasons of A Better Us, they have represented the newlyweds uh, with no kids, the, you know, the, the couple out people. there. The young people, okay, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, <laughs> absolutely, you're young. Uh, Eric is our son, so um, we, we have to acknowledge that too. Um, but, Full disclosure. Yep. Yeah, but one thing that we are so excited to yeah. announce to you is that Eric and Kara have moved beyond now being the newlyweds with no kids because on January 2nd, God blessed them with a beautiful baby boy. So where is Bradley? Oh, you want to see him? Okay. Yes. <laughs> Here he comes. Right. Kara, tell us all about Bradley. Oh, so Bradley is, is almost three months old. He's so cute. And his name is Bradley John David Maines, and he was born January 2nd, <laughs> and he was 9 pounds, 14 ounces, and like 23 inches long. He's a big baby. He's huge. So. And he just slept 10 hours, so wow. we are pretty excited. We're feeling really good today. We got it's a, a game full changer. night's sleep. It's a game changer when so. you can sleep through the night, and it's so true. it's just... So we're we loving him. every we so moment much. of parenting. And there he is, baby Bradley. I happen to know that he especially loves his Nana. Don't <laughs> Yes, he does. But Papa's oh. his favorite. No, no, no. <laughs> he whispered to me the other night, Nana is, but that's okay. Anyway, so we just wanted I'll to- just hold him here the entire time. How about that? Yeah. Right? Oh, <laughs> Might hey, be a little distracting. That's fine with me. I'll just <laughs> zoom right in on him. <laughs> All right. He's a sweetheart. Yeah, we are- so excited um, that this is the next addition to our family. Yep. Now we have three grandbabies. That's right. right. All right, okay. I'm gonna hand them off he again. Okay. Do, do the handoff. Hand there we so go. So Eric and Kara are actually in Bowmanville, Ontario. On the east side of Toronto. And we are on the west side of Toronto, about two hours yep. away. And at the bottom of your screen. Down south there, Dave and Ashley Willis. Now Dave and Ashley are with uh, Marriage Today Ministry, led by Jimmy Evans, who's also been an expert on our program yeah, as well. You're very familiar with Jimmy Evans. And, uh, and they've written a uh, uh, number of books, yeah. uh, but kind of the signature one is The Naked Marriage, which is mm -hmm. a great title. It's, it's a catchy a, title. It's an attention Absolutely. grabber. For okay, sure. people's yeah. attention, for sure. And they have the Naked Marriage podcast, which I, I love to listen to in the car, yeah. and it's, it's good stuff, good guys. Stuff. Good stuff. And they... Um, they travel widely with the EXO marriage conferences yeah. from Marriage Today and everything. And anyways, it's great to have you guys joining us. Thanks for taking the time yes. in this uh, very strange uh, time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And thank you, Ron and Ann and Absolutely. Eric and Kara. Congrats on baby Bradley. He is thank incredible. Thank you so much. much. Thank you. We are blessed. He's already almost my height, which is really <laughs> impressive. He's going to be dunking a basketball soon. I know. Yeah. Really? Well, his daddy is six foot eight, so you know what are yeah. you what are you gonna do? <laughs> so, well, while I'm thinking of it, I'm gonna encourage people watching right now. If you're watching on on Facebook, just do the uh, the share thing or the watch party or whatever you can do, and get get kind of your groups uh, in on this because we're gonna talk about some important things. Because one of the things that uh, Dave and Ashley and the Marriage Today Ministry has put out. It's called the Marriage Survival Guide, and I don't know if I can hold this just right so you can see it. But, yeah. Uh, no, it's, it's, the, it's the light that's too bright. Anyway, Marriage Survival Guide, marriage survival subtitled guide. Practical Advice to Help Your Marriage Survive Social Distancing. Mm. And, and this is a free download. They made it free. God bless them for that. Yeah. And, uh, and you can download it. I've got it on my iPad, and, or you can get it on your computer or, or your phones or whatever. And so what, what a great resource it is for this time and very timely. 
Um, Dave and Ashley, uh, you know, kind of what was on your heart when, when you guys pulled this together? Wow. I mean, we just, we know the whole world is kind of reeling right now. And, you know, we, we actually were talking uh, with, with someone about this. And this woman said that in China specifically who experienced, you know, COVID-19 first, that once they came out of it, there was a huge influx of divorces. And, and that just to us, I mean, we were like, that is just terrible. And I think what it is, it, you know, whenever crisis happens, it just accentuates whatever is already there. And so for people who maybe are already like I am really frustrated with my spouse or we're already kind of going through a rough season. It just makes it even more so. And even if maybe your marriage, you know, you would consider it to be kind of fine or in a good season when you're, you know, forced to self quarantine and you have all this fear and this tension going on, and then there's financial crisis on top of it, it, it can really bring out a lot of issues and it can make, you know, spouses rub each other the wrong way. And so we wanted to provide encouragement and practical steps people can take to actually use this time to make their marriage better. Because for a lot of people, they are working from home or they're, maybe they even lost a job. And so there's some hard circumstances, but we believe that God can use this to really grow your marriage and grow your family and make it make, you know, kind of come out of this better and not bitter. Absolutely. And so Dave and Ashley, Ron and I have been reading through your marriage survival guide. And I know that Eric and Kara have been as well. So Eric and Kara, you know, you've got the experts right there, the ones that wrote the book. Is there something you want to ask them? Honestly, uh, it's such a great book it is. and it's very timely. It's and uh, I, I thank you guys for making it free because that helps us out too. Yes. <laughs> um, but one, uh, one aspect from the book, uh, a quote from you guys, uh, your spouse is always more important than your money. Uh, one of our questions is, uh, and just for people our age or people in our uh, circumstance as well, a question would be for those who may live paycheck to paycheck and is kind of, are, are kind of on the younger scale and, and maybe don't have a job anymore because of this whole global crisis, uh, what, how can we be encouraging them? Like what, what can Kara and I even be doing to, to share with our friends in, in an encouraging way to say, hey, like we're in this too, but like, do you have any advice for, for uh, those kind of people? Yeah, absolutely. And having a unified financial plan and really looking at money God's way, I think is, is one of the biggest factors that lead to a marriage that's full of peace versus a marriage that's full of stress. And we've done it both ways. Like when we yes. were young and broke, um, you know, we made a lot of dumb decisions financially and, and it created a bunch of unnecessary stress. And so, uh, you know, when we, we teach on it now, not that we've got it all figured out now, but we've, we've learned some hard lessons just through making some, some bad choices. And so we want to prevent couples um, from having to go through what we walk through. And so we've got a bunch of, you know, free resources included, you know, the survival guide that you mentioned, but even our, our, our talk at the EXO Marriage Conference this year, uh, our first talk was all about money and marriage and how to find peace in both. And in addition to the survival guide, we're given a free 30 day subscription to EXO now, which is our, our video streaming services where people can watch all the video content. Wow. That's it, um, XONow.tv is the website for that. If you want to spend 30, you know, the next 30 days with you and your spouse having a big free marriage conference at home, but kind of the, the nuts and bolts of the marriage talk is just remembering that God owns everything. Like it's not ours to start with. It's all his, it's not yours and mine. And when we realize it's not 50% mine, 50% yours, but it's a hundred percent God's mm. and we're just temporary managers of everything he's entrusted to us. That one factor kind of helps us see all of our money and all of our responsibilities in a different light. And if a couple can agree on that and just hold with open hands, everything that God gives to us, you know, then we're going to be positioned to receive whatever blessings he has for us, but we're also not going to hold too tightly to things he calls us to let go of. And, and I think that that's, that's where God wants us to get is just to remember that he owns it all. He's our provider and that there's no amount of money or, or, or financial stress that's worth creating a lack of unity in the marriage. Mm -hmm. That's we so always good. say that when it comes to financial problems in marriage, it's not always a financial issue. A lot of times when it, when it brings trouble to the marriage itself, it's really a communication issue. It's, it's because the couple, you know, is at a point where they don't know how to talk about it in a healthy way. And so we always encourage couples we're working with, with financial stress specifically, is you've got to get on the same page. There can't be one spouse who knows everything that's coming in and going out and the others totally has no idea. It needs to be a partnership where you're talking about everything 
and you make a plan. You know, there's power in a plan. There's power in knowing, okay, yes, all of this is God's. Yes, I may have lost my job. Yes, we don't know what the future holds, but what do we know and what can we plan? You know, yeah. what do we have? And you know, we, what, can we sell? what can we sell? What, can we what, we where, what money is laid around here? We had an old pastor, a friend of ours, he would always say like, there's money all around your house. And you know, sometimes these desperate times call for desperate measures. But I feel like when a couple can come together and say, you know, yes, our finances may be in ruins right now, but I'm not gonna let it ruin our marriage. We're gonna work in this together. I'd rather have an in empty rooms in our house and have a wonderful marriage than keep all this stuff. And then, you know, we end up having a marriage that's falling apart. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's good, stuff. That good. good advice. And, mm -hmm. and it's such an important topic, topic because one of the, the top causes for divorce is just, you know, money clashes, yeah. you know, <laughs> and people have different kind of money baggage backgrounds and they come together, they get married and then that becomes a real issue. And, and, you know, in times like this with this whole COVID-19 and the self quarantining together yeah. and the stress that compounds on top of already existing money issues, mm -hmm. we need to remember that during this stressful time, we're not our best selves. We're <laughs> really feeling it. Yeah. We're yes. feeling it more intensified than ever before, more magnified. And so we really need to give each other grace, don't we? That we're not going yes. to Absolutely. be so uh, on top of mistakes that we've made or that we're making right now, but we're going to take a step back and say, okay, let's not be that severe with our spouse right now. For sure. Yeah, yeah. Grace, grace is really the word, not just for the, the financial issues, like you said, but that we're all being squeezed right now. Um, I think challenging times like we're facing globally, it, it tends to amplify everything. It's an amplifier. It makes all the hard things in your life seem way harder. But if we'll really look for it, it'll make the sweet things in your life seem even sweeter. You know, it'll make the addition of a, a baby and a grandbaby like Bradley, even, even, some, even something greater. It'll, it'll make, you know, the simple joys and blessings of being at home with family even sweeter if we let it. So if, if we focus just on the just on the hardships part, then, then it, it can seem overwhelming. But if we'll focus on all the blessings that God's bringing to our attention by forcing us to slow down right now, there are blessings to be seen too. But, but through it all, you're right. And we, we, we need to give each other a lot of grace because all of us are, we're out of our routine. We're, we're tired. We're uncertain about the future. And now is the time more than ever to just extend a lot of grace to each other. And to know that this season is temporary, yeah. but to use this season to talk about what are some things that we're learning right now that we want to do differently when things get back to normal. And mm -hmm. if you do that, then this season could end up being the launch pad that catapults your marriage to a new level of health once, mm -hmm. once we get to the other side of it. Totally. You know, one thing we've been doing that has really helped us not feel so much cabin fever is we're still, we have the ability in Texas to be out walking. They said, you know, you can walk around your neighborhood. I think most places are allowing those kind of things. Mm -hmm. And that's been a lifesaver. I mean, cause we, we have uh, four boys, but two of them are old enough to babysit. So we'll say, listen, you're going to take turns watching your brother. We pay him because we don't want him to resent it. And they, so they love that. They're all eager to do that. And we're like, mom and dad are going on an hour walk. We're just going to walk the neighborhood. We're still close by. And during that time, we kind of decompress. Because, and we take turns. We always laugh about it. Because like yesterday, Dave was having a rough day. Yeah, today she is. And it's today, like, I'm just like, turn. what is my deal? You know, We're not allowed to so. at the same time. But <laughs> <laughs> what if we have it at the same Sometimes time? Sometimes we those do. Are really, those are some hard days. Those are rough really days. hard days. <laughs> you know, there's actually science behind this. Not only the endorphins that you feel in exercising, doing an activity together, but there's science behind, you know, especially for men, when they're walking side or, or, or when they're side by side someone or and doing an activity, they are more likely to open up. And, you know, we hear a lot of wives say, well, my husband, I want to talk to him, but he just won't open up. But, you know, science says, hey, if you get doing an activity and you're side by side, I, I think it's just less intimidating, especially if you have some major stuff you need to talk about or, and there's a lot of fear involved and some heavy, um, just hard things that need to be discussed. It's a good way to just open up. And so I encourage couples, if you're not doing that currently, you know, find a way you can exercise together and still talk and, and make the best use of that time. Mm -hmm. I love that. Eric, I saw you leaning forward like you wanted to say something. I didn't know if that was for you. I was leaning forward just because I was, I just, I don't know. Oh, you're comfortable. Okay. This is actually really good stuff. I, I felt I just needed to get closer to it. Okay. So I, I mean, the lean in, it was an ear lean in, so you make sure you take it all in. Okay, I get it. Now, in, in the intro in the book, um, Dave and Ashley, you, you mentioned that early on with this crisis happening, um, your ministry posted a uh, you know, just a, a kind of a short, uh, a couple sentences that got like 70,000 uh, shares mm -hmm. and comments and all this. Wow. 
And, and, and what it said was simply, most kids are home from school and many events are canceled. What could seem like a time to panic might just be a gift from God to help us all get some unexpected rest and reconnect with family. Mm. Now, there's a different take on it, right? In, instead of seeing it as a time to, that you're, you're going to be together, so you're going to be in conflict. And, and unfortunately, in some homes, that does happen. But maybe uh, you see it as a gift. Maybe God's uh, allowing the, mm. some time for us to say, you know what, Let, let's just focus on, on us for a while and, and uh, kind of let the things happen out there in the world. But they, we're, we're a home. We're a unit. Uh, we're together. We're one. How can we uh, take advantage of this time? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We're telling our kids, um, pay attention to everything you're thinking and doing right now, because you're going to tell your grandchildren about this, this season of life right now. You're living through something historic. And, and while, yeah, there's, I understand some of the panic with, with financial uncertainty and with the disease itself and with, you know, just so much uncertainty out there. But I really think that, that mo for the most part, we're going to look back years from now now and realize that you know that month or however long it turns out to be that we had to kind of stop life as normal and focus in on family and faith and just slow down um we made some great memories in that season in, in that time yeah. and so we're just trying to help people be intentional with the time because we can't change a lot of this you know we, we can't change when we're going to be able to get back to normal we can't change you know maybe the amount of money in our bank account right now those sorts of things mm -hmm. but we can make a conscious decision to be fully present while we are at home and to really engage with our spouse right now, like never before, and, and our children, if you have children in the home, or, or to pick up a phone and call loved ones that you haven't talked to in a while. And, and I think that if we'll be intentional about relationships um, in this season, it could spark some really great habits because really the whole point of life is relationships. Jesus said, what's most important? Love God, love your neighbor, which is, is people. Love God, love people. That's, that's what life is really all about. And when we make it about everything else, and loving God and loving people takes a backseat to, to chasing after other goals, then really we, we've got things out of balance and we're missing out on what That's that good. fulfilling life is that he came to give us. And so maybe this whole, this whole time is an opportunity more than any kind of a curse. It's an opportunity and a blessing for us to be able to reconnect with what matters most. And so Kara, as a new mom, you know, you're, you're navigating a whole new world being a brand new mom. And now the world around you is changing as well. I just want to get your, your take on everything. Well, I was just thinking about this the other day, just with everything that's going on. And, and I found, found that we were getting to a place where people were finding purpose and just doing, mm -hmm. and we forgot to actually rest in it. And so there were a lot of people just burning out or relationships just burning out mm -hmm. because we forgot to just stop and rest. And a lot of the times people didn't know how to rest or how to stop because they were just so used to doing. And even being a new mom, I was just so used to going to work and in the routine of everything. And, and now all of a sudden I'm on mat leave and I have all this time with our little baby boy. And it's like, okay, Eric's still in the routine of everything. But what this time has done is it's given like Eric and I time to just really enjoy each other, mm -hmm. enjoy Bradley Honestly, and get yeah. time that we may have never had if this hadn't have happened. And I'm just loving that um, even though none of us saw this coming or hoped that this would happen, um, just enjoying the time together and, and putting a pause on everything. Like all of us, we have to pause it all. And it's just how do we do this intentionally, like you guys are saying. And there was a quote that I highlighted because I loved it. From the book, yeah. From the book. And it says, remember that your character should always be stronger than your circumstance. Mm -hmm. And then you go on and say, we can't always control what happens to us, but we can always control how we choose to respond. Mm -hmm. So one of my questions that I have is as a new parent, as new parents, as young parents um, who are just trying to navigate this and just kind of getting through like the everyday tasks and just trying to keep our house from burning down and Honestly, just kind of just like, getting through every day now that we're in survival mode <laughs> yeah how do we or how do parents um lead with character when they feel like they're just trying to stay above water with learning how to now do online school or learning how to stop fights that may have not have happened if we weren't on quarantine mm -hmm. oh yeah man i I, I can totally relate. I mean, I wasn't on quarantine when we had our kids, but I do remember those days of having a baby and just, it is exhausting. It's beautiful. It's like such an amazing time, but it, it is so exhausting. And like you said, now you have the quarantine and everything with COVID-19 on top of that. 
So I know there's a lot, you know, coming at you, but I think when it comes to, you know, trying not to let it kind of make us lash out at our spouse or, or just even if we don't say anything, just having that kind of cold shoulder or bad attitude, you, I think we, we all need to be really in tune with our own needs and our own limits and being able to verbalize that and saying like, I have not showered and it's 5 p.m. Like if I could just have a bath or a shower, I would feel like a new person. You know, just being your own advocate. Because a lot of times, especially, I feel like spouses, and I, and I struggled with this so much early, in the early years of our marriage, we sometimes expect our spouse to read our mind. And we really do. Like we may not even realize we're doing it, but I, I came to a point in our marriage where we, we ended up in this fight and, and I saw Dave's face and it's like he had no idea what I really needed from him because I literally had not told him. And it's like, we tell our own kids, use your words, but then we don't even use our words with our spouse. And so it was really convicting to me that I've got to be my own advocate. I've got to say, listen, sweetie, I, I am wearing thin. I really just need a moment. And, you know, and then if our spouse comes to us and says that in a way that we can serve our spouse, we say, okay, what can I do to give you that moment? What can I do to give you that bath that you need or that time that you need or whatever it is? How can I serve you? I think when we both, you know, take that on. We're, we're aware of our own needs, but we also are willing to serve. It makes all the difference. Mm -hmm. That's good. good. And, and the way you say it, like you said, Ashley, if you say it in a, a loving way with a good tone of voice and, and your motives yes. are pure, you're not attacking, saying you'd never give me time to myself, but, but you're just right. sharing how you're feeling, really, mm -hmm. to your spouse, um, yeah. then I think that makes all the difference because yeah. then they're, they're seeing your heart they're not feeling like you're attacking their heart. Exactly. They always say use I statements and not you statements because, you know, I hear counselors say that all the time. And that's so true because you can't be mad at your spouse when they're just simply telling you what they need. Like, it's just, they're saying, this is what I need. I I'm feeling this way. So, yeah. that's good. All right, David, Ashley, before we let you go, um, we know that you have a, a pastor's heart. That's your, your, your background in pastoral ministry and, and you really, you still are today pastoring couples now. Yeah. And, uh, but there's a, a whole spiritual aspect to this. Like there, there's things going on um, in kind of the unseen realm that the, the enemy would like to take advantage of and, and really mess things up. And so you know, we've talked about some practical things and just some relational things, but um, just kind of on a, a spiritual level, um, what would you say to couples to encourage them mm -hmm. to also use this opportunity not to just grow in their relationship at home with their spouse and kids, but with God. Oh yeah, that's great. Yeah, and, and, I, and you're exactly right. There is, there is a huge element of spiritual warfare that we're all fighting. And I think part of that is just knowing the enemy's game plan. Like he doesn't have any new tricks. He's mm -hmm. been doing the same things from the beginning. And, yeah. and really his main tricks are he, he tries to discourage, he tries to distract, and, and then he, he, he accuses. I mean, he's the accuser. And so when you're feeling really discouraged, just know that discouragement isn't coming from the Lord. You know, sometimes the Holy Spirit will convict if there's a part of our lives that needs to needs to change, but it doesn't come in, in discouragement. It comes in, in love. Um, if we're feeling discouraged, like I'm beat down, I'm not good enough, I'm looking on Instagram and all the other parents and couples seem to be doing quarantine way better than me and I'm a loser and all that, that's, that's a lie from the enemy. And so maybe if, maybe it means stop scrolling through social media if that's something that's triggering that discouragement or comparison in you and being distracted from family or being distracted from say, you know, I want to take this time and, you know, re read God's word, or I want to take this time and do something that's going to fill my soul back up. Mm -hmm. Just being intentional with the time of like, what, what's going to help me get closer to God through this? What's going to help me get closer to my family through this and help me to be at my best in terms of my health, you know, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, uh, and, and do the same for my family and anything that, that's competing with, with, with those goals or taking away from it, you know, to, to trim it out of your life. And, and if we're all honest about those exercises, we might come out of this with new disciplines where we're all spending more time with family, more time with the Lord, and less time doing some of the time wasters that really just bring us down. And I'm, I'm guilty of those a lot as well. So I'm talking to myself here too. Yeah, definitely. I think that, you know, social media can, and, and just being on phones and things like that, I know a lot of us are on it more than usual these days. Mm. It, it can be a great point of connection, especially in this time of social distancing, but we can't let it become an obsession because I do think it can be good in those ways of connecting. And also it's an amazing prayer chain. I mean, I've seen, I, you know, I know sometimes Facebook and Instagram get a bad rap, but really if we use it as the tool that, that God can, God can use it in, in a very holy way and, and being the most amazing way to 
have a worldwide prayer chain, you know, and I know that that's going on right now. And that's amazing when I think about that. It's just, it's awesome mm -hmm. to think about people from all over the world praying together and really coming to their knees and maybe seeking the Lord in a way they never have before. Mm -hmm. And so I love that part of it, but I do think it is so easy for it to just become this obsession, like, and not only like in the comparison trap, but in what, what else is bad? What's the other bad news? And I do think, you know, one other thing that, that the enemy likes to do is separate us. And, and if he can't separate us from our spouse and, and our family, you know, maybe even just separating us from our faith, from having hope in the Lord, you know, feeling like the, the sky is falling down and, and like, it just, it ends up maybe, you know, kind of putting a wedge between us and the Lord because we're not seeking him as much because we feel all the gloom and doom. And so it is that time where, again, I know we talked a lot about intentionality when it comes to marriage, but I think we've got to be super intentional about that time with the Lord, because it is so easy. You know, right now we're homeschooling and traditionally our kids have been in public school. And so there's a lot more on the to-do list because we also are working from home. And so I get where parents are and, and, and couples are. It's so easy to put that on the back burner. But what we forget is we are not gonna experience God's peace if we don't go to the source of peace and that's God himself. Mm -hmm. And so we are, we're not gonna be our, our, our best for our family or for whatever it is and just, you know, it, it really in our, in our own hearts and in our minds, if we don't first seek him. Mm -hmm. good. good stuff. Yeah, now, good um, I, I want to close in prayer in a moment, but I want to remind people, I guess we haven't even told them yet how they can get this yet, but if you can go for the marriage survival guide, uh, which the subtitle, if you joined us and you didn't see at the beginning, that's uh, what the marriage today program has put out uh, the ministry that uh, Dave and Ashley are part of uh, practical advice to help your marriage survive social distancing. Mm -hmm. Talk about a timely book and they're giving it away free. Mm -hmm. And so to make it simple, because a lot of you know our website, abetterus.tv. Mm -hmm. If you go there, scroll down a bit, you'll find the, the picture of the survival guide and just click on the link there. It'll take you to, to their ministry website where you can just sign up to get the free download and encourage you to do that. Mm -hmm. Share it with others during this time. Mm -hmm. And it's what a strength. Yeah. To, yeah. yeah. For sure. Okay. Yeah. Well, Eric and Kara and baby Bradley, yeah. Thank you for being with us. And, and we just know that, you know, as we all learn through yeah. this really unusual time that God is going to strengthen us like never before, because we've never been here before. Yeah. But as we listen to these experts and really glean from mm -hmm. them and, and apply what they're sharing to our own personal lives, that will will grow together and grow closer to each other. So that's what we pray yeah. for you guys. And Dave and Ashley, thank you so much for just yeah. all that you've invested in couples around the world, but in particular, couples that um, watch A Better Us. We're very yeah. thankful for you guys. So let me pray. Lord, thank you for this time we've had uh, talking about you, talking about each other in, in marriage, at our homes, during this very uh, strange time mm. indeed. And Lord, we just pray that you'll knit our hearts together yes. in, in, in our homes, that it'll be, get stronger than ever. It won't be a time of division, but a time of banding together yes. and uh, in unity like never before. Lord, may we use this as a gift mm -hmm. time from you yes. to, to do things that would strengthen our marriage and family. Lord, may we draw close to you for anyone, Lord, that doesn't know you in a personal way. I pray that this will be a time they can even just reach out to you in a very simple faith and just say, Lord, I, I realize I need you. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my life and help me to live for you and help me to, to be strong in myself and in, in our marriage and in our home and during this time. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Thanks so much, guys. This has been wonderful, and maybe we'll have to do it again sometime. We'd yes. love it. Thank love you that. all so much. It was great to digitally meet you. Hopefully, yes. we can do it. This is how people meet each other these days. So. <laughs> yeah, you just stick out your hand, and that's about all you can do. <laughs> just elbows. <laughs> Only elbows. Yeah. Virtual, yeah. virtual elbows. Okay. There it is. There it is. <laughs> okay. okay. Bye, thanks, guys. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.